what is the difference between liberalism and leftism? See, one should not call leftist liberals. Liberals are no more leftists than they are rightists. And when I grew up, the distinction between liberal and left was huge, huge. Liberals were, in fact, often in the vanguard of fighting the left. But uh, that is no longer the case. Most liberal values are now held by conservatives. So it's not right to speak of the New York Times editorial page as liberal. It's not. It's leftist. Or, or of the Democratic Party. The Democratic Party is leftist, not any longer liberal. It was liberal when John F. Kennedy was president. Let me give you a number of examples of the differences between liberalism and leftism. It is so important that this be understood, and you will realize how liberalism has simply uh, been taken over by the left. Uh, the I mentioned in a previous hour the famous statement of John F. Kennedy, ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. That's liberal. That's it's also conservative. But it's, it's liberal, it's not leftist. Leftist is, ask what your country can do for you. You see that at uh, all these rallies. What will you do for me? What will you do for my group if you're elected? That is a left-wing mode of thought. It's true in Europe. What will the government give me? What benefits can I get from the government? Health care, education, loans, whatever it might, housing, whatever it might be, the idea that the government is there to serve me uh, is a left-wing idea. The state is there to serve me. I will have a baby out of wedlock, and I will have the state serve me. In, uh, in the past, if you had a, a child out of wedlock, uh, a charity helped you, uh, but there was a stigma to having a child out of wedlock. Liberalism stigmatized it too. See Daniel Patrick Moynihan, the famous liberal Democrat who was a senator from New York State. Liberal Democrat, remember that. And he spoke about the breakdown of the black family as the great crisis of the time, and at that time, the out-of-wet-like birth rate was, was probably half what it is today uh, in the black community. Today it is, a, it is over 70%. Some say 80, but it's between 70 and 80%. Of, in other words, of black children in the United States are born to a mother who was not married to the child's father. That's a big, that's a big, that's a big sum. The notion that the state exists to help me is a left-wing notion, as I said, in Europe as well as the United States. That's one huge difference between liberalism and leftism. Another, I will give you a list here, that's, that's one. Number two, race. The idea that one should be race-blind colorblind, as it is called, is a liberal notion, that race should be insignificant, and that character is everything. That's what Martin Luther King said in his famous address, where he said, and it's quoted all the time, that he looks forward to the day when people will be judged by the content of their character rather than the color of their skin. That's a liberal notion. Now, it's a conservative notion. In other words, liberalism is now conservatism. People ask me all, well, not all the time, but people have often asked me, well, you know, when did you change? And I said, well, the truth is I really didn't change. The liberal values that I grew up with are overwhelmingly the same as the conservative values that I now hold. And I am not alone in thinking that. I didn't leave anything. Something left me. Race is a terrific example. Do you know that most colleges, or many colleges, I don't know if it's most, have black graduations, separate black graduations, or separate black dorms? Is that a liberal notion? No, 
That's really a racist notion, but it's held by the left. It's not held by conservatives, and it's not held by traditional liberals. The idea that race matters, as opposed to culture, of course culture matters. There is an African-American culture, there has been, there is. That's, that's a separate issue entirely. But that race, that color of skin matters, that is a fascist notion, actually. And it has uh, been taken up by the left, but it's not a liberal notion at all. Taxation. John F. Kennedy actually called for lower taxes because he wanted to stimulate the economy. The more business gives to the government, the less it has to hire people. Do you know that a seven-year-old could understand that the first time he or she hears it? It takes a college education to knock that common sense notion out of your brain. But it's just common sense. Here, there's very simple proof. Let us say the government taxed 100% of a company's profits. What would happen? It would go out of business. Let's say it taxed none of its profits, zero. What would happen to the company? It would expand wildly, correct? It would be unbelievable. It would hire and hire and hire. Now, you can't have that because somebody has to fund the government. We understand that. But it's, it's, all, it's obvious that the lower the taxes on companies, the more productive they become. That's true in every country, and that is why in Europe they are realizing that they have overtaxed, and now the tax rate on companies in all Europe, in all of Europe, is lower than that of the United States. John F. Kennedy, and I'm using him as the paradigmatic liberal, was for lower taxes. So I've given you thus far the role of the government. Uh, is it there for me? That's left wing, not liberal. R- race important? That's left wing, not liberal. Taxation? That's left wing, not liberal. A defense? Defense? National defense? John F. Kennedy actually ran on a platform that the defense of the United States was weakened under the Republican administration of Dwight Eisenhower that preceded him. He was going to spend more money on defense because, again, his inaugural address, which, incidentally, the proof of what I'm saying is very is, is easily available to you. Any college kid that you know, niece, nephew, child, grandchild, any college... Uh, any college student that you know, or anyone in their 20s, give them John F. Kennedy's inaugural address. Don't tell them who gave it and say, was this given by a Republican or a Democratic president? And I I am willing to bet that the, the majority would say by a Republican. Because among other things in the address, he said that America has a role in the world uh, to uphold liberty and that we should pay any price to do so, and that we need a strong defense, therefore, for humanity's sake as well as America's sake. This is the Ultimate Issues Hour, third hour every Tuesday, and I spoke about Iowa the first two hours, but I am devoting the Ultimate Issues Hour to a politically relevant topic, and that is the differences between liberalism and leftism. Leftism is now dominant. There are more areas of differences. And then I will take your calls at 1-8-Prager-776. Hello, everybody. I'm Dennis Prager. This is the Ultimate Issues Hour, third hour every Tuesday. Some great issue of life. I talked about Iowa the first two hours. This is, however, a politically related and relevant subject. The differences between liberalism and leftism. They're huge. And I've seen the change of in the liberal world to leftism, and it has, it's hurt America terribly. There is no more liberalism. It's now called conservatism. Virtually every liberal value I was raised with is now held by conservatives. So I gave you some examples. Let's see about the the, uh, the government there for me. 
yes, uh, race is significant. That's leftist, not uh, not liberal. High taxes is higher and higher taxes, or let's put it this way, lowering taxes to stimulate the economy was liberal. And higher and higher taxes is leftist. A political correctness, there was no liberal political correctness. That's a leftist idea. There are things you cannot say. The war on free speech is, is completely non-liberal, completely not. Liberalism thrived on open inquiry. If you differed, you differed. Uh, and now, I just got a uh, just got a, a tweet from uh, not tweet but uh, an email uh, from Dinesh D'Souza about his upcoming speech in Gonzaga, and they're going they're banning the public. They're only allowing students there. They're banning the public because they don't like his views on immigration. He's an immigrant himself, ironically and uh, some other subjects that they don't agree with him on. Uh, the, the the least open inquiry in the country is taking place in, in colleges. 40% of students, according to Pew Research, don't even support the idea of free speech if the speech will hurt anybody's feelings. This is th- There's nothing in common with liberalism, nothing. That was why we called it a liberal education. Liberal education was rooted in Western civilization. It was intellectually alive, not not the death that leftism puts over it. I, I mentioned the defense. Defense was a huge thing for liberals. Huge. Class is a classic. Class is a classic left wing issue. Yes, since Marx. I'll give you one more example. If you read, uh, FDR was a liberal, obviously. Uh, Franklin D. Roosevelt. Uh, if you read his speeches, as I have, uh, speeches that he gave uh, at, during World War II, for example, you know how often he made reference to, we have to protect Christian civilization? It, it is, it, if anybody today were to say we need to protect Christian civilization, let's say against Islamic terror, uh, they would be uh, they would be removed from public discourse by by the left. Liberals understood there was such a thing as Christian civilization, Western civilization, and be- and didn't believe all civilizations were equally moral. So these are very important. Now, what do liberals and and the left have in common? Well, for example, they have a big belief that government. The, the liberal b- always believe that government should be bigger than the conservative believed. That That's one example. Always believed that uh, you went to the government first, whereas the conservative believes you go first to family, uh, f- second to church and community, and third, only when nothing else works, do you go to the state. 